Do you have joy in your life? This question is so simple, but so profound. Today, I want you to have joy. And if you don't have it, I want you to start reaching out for it. I have met so many people that are depressed and have difficulties enjoying life and are still living for the weekend. And if you're a Christian, that shouldn't be you. That shouldn't be you. So I want to encourage you to pursue joy as a reality of your life, not just as some sort of theological concept or, well, yeah, I know I should have joy, but fill in the blank, fill in the blank with whatever it is that you want, but pursue God for joy. Joy comes from the Lord. I love the little verse from David where he's talking about return to me the joy of my salvation. And for those of us that had that salvation moment where it was such a big, exciting thrill, and there was this joy and elation, and today you're kind of wondering, yeah, where is the joy gone? Where is the passion gone? The flame of the relationship from the beginning is no longer present. I get it, but you can get it back. We should have joy. Now, the biggest and hardest question that everyone wants to know is, how do you get it? How do you get joy? Like, if I don't have it, then what do I need to do to obtain it? And the first thing that I will say is that ask God for it. Literally, just pray and ask God, Lord, fill me with your joy. Fill me with joy and bring joy into my life. Because joy really is something that can come from the Lord straight to you and change your life. We should be full of joy. We should enjoy God in his presence. And that is something else. I really think that for so many people, you don't experience God's joy because you don't spend time in his presence. Take time out of your life to spend with God, alone, quiet, in prayer, seeking after him. And if you're depressed, I highly encourage you, pursue the Lord. Ask him, ask him to reveal and show you, hey, Lord, why am I depressed? How can I receive your joy? And I just think for so many people, the lack of joy comes from a lack of a prayer life. They're not spending time with the Lord, so they're not receiving from the Lord all of the benefits that he has. He has all of these benefits that he wants you to have. He wants you to grow and he wants you to get closer to him and experience joy and peace and his good pleasure. But you won't get those things if you don't take the time to slow down and meet with him. Also, there are sometimes things that are obstructing our own joy. You know, the devil is a liar and a thief, and he is there to steal your joy away. So if you have known sin in your life, find a friend and confess your sins. Confess your sins to God, confess your sins to your friends, and receive, you know, healing, healing from those things. There is a real shame that just comes and steals your joy. And it's awful, right? All of us have experienced that where like life is so good and then you decide to whatever it is, fill in the blank, fill in your pets in. What is it that you know brings you shame and you hate it and you hate yourself every time you do it? You know, rather it's, you know, lust or overeating or gossip or lying or any of those sorts of things. You know, but you can return, you know, and when David makes this proclamation of return to me, Lord, the joy of my salvation, it's coming. It's coming right out of that situation with Bathsheba. David has just completely blown it. And now Nathan has confronted him. And so David is literally seeking the joy of the Lord after the biggest fall of his life. So seek after God's joy, pray for it. Uh, I really encourage you, like, 
for those that are the deep intellectuals and you are studying a lot and I, I'll just say like for myself, I am really been going through this where I'm spending lots and lots of time reading and studying and thinking and I find that if I only spend time doing that, it starts to work on my soul and wear me down and bring down my levels of joy and happiness and my own existence ends up in my brain and in my head but there's something very real about being mm, spiritual, connecting with God on a emotional, spiritual level. I know for many intellectuals, they're not really necessarily into all the warm and fuzzies and they're not charismatic. And I'm not saying you have to be some sort of chandelier or swinging charismatic to experience the joy of the Lord. There are so many Puritans and, and old I don't know, old Christians who write all of these deep theological books that talk about enjoying God's presence, experiencing his joy, and being filled up. And as we read, like, the fruits of the Spirit, right? Joy is one of those. So seek being filled with God's presence, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and receiving joy from him. It shouldn't be something that's so absent from your life. And I get it. If that has not been a regular part of your life, and if you've been a Christian for years and years and years, yet you do not experience God's joy on a regular basis, then I encourage you to pursue God and just pray, Lord, help me to understand your joy. Help me to experience your joy. Fill me with your joy. Pray and cry out to God. He is there and present in a real reality, and he can change the way that you experience life. He comes inside of us, not as merely a metaphor, but as a present reality that every believer can experience and enjoy. So especially for those that are spending a lot of time exercising the mind and the brain, you need to have a little bit of balance, and I'm not saying you have to be completely out there, but you need to have a little bit of balance in making sure that you're feeding your spirit and your soul as well. Leonard Ravenhill, he always used to say that, you know, they would send off their preachers to their cemeteries. Oh, I mean sem seminaries. And he was always very critical that pastors would go off to seminary do all of this studying, come back with giant brains and shrunken souls. And I think there is so much truth in that. Make sure that you're not over exercising your mind when you also should be exercising your spirit, your soul. You need to be feeding the inside of you. You know, I don't know if Jesus meant this exactly, but I've always wondered about it when he says, for there will be a time when those worship God in spirit and in truth. And so I don't want to get crucified over the hermeneutics exactly of that passage, but it's always seemed to me like this idea of worshiping God with all of your emotions and spirit, this spiritual connection with God and worshiping him with the mind, with the biblical truth, and that those two things need to come together. They shouldn't be separated, but they should be in one place. You should worship with God, worship God with all that you are and experience all that he has for you in return. So don't neglect the personal experience, this personal relationship, personal connection with God, but embrace it, embrace connecting with God. If you're spending a lot of time reading and exercising your mind and watching every apologetics video out there, then make sure that you're spending more time in prayer. You're being more intent on meeting with God on your knees, being more intent about worshiping. The last one I want to put on here is to worship. It really can feed the soul to just spend time singing or worshiping and, and finding some way of praising and giving thanks to God for all that he has done and all that he's going to do. So, Lift up your voice to the Lord. You know, I, I love 
the Psalms of David because David pours out his heart to God. David really does have some amazing theological claims and, and all of the writings of the Psalms are really amazing, but he's also one who just is able to allow his heart to speak to the Lord. He pours out his heart before the Lord and connects with God and just tells God how it's going. Rather, he's frustrated or angry or excited. Whatever it is that he's experiencing, he's lifting it up to the Lord and bringing it to him. And the Lord is meeting David where he is. So if you haven't found joy, seek the Lord for it and he will provide.